Um, so, with the recent closing of the long-awaited Kirkland's deal, I thought it could be really fun to give you guys a little history lesson on my favorite topic, which is retail. Um, more specifically, a very brief history of retail shopping. So get in, loser. Um, so, little side note, I have a massive affinity for all things retail. I studied retail in college, I worked full-time in retail management for seven years at these three companies, and I also wrote a love letter to the godfather of retail science, Paco Underhill. I imagine most of you here have read this. Um, after I wrote him the letter, he friended me on Facebook. This is real. Very exciting. Um, but retail has evolved a lot in the past 5,000 years, and we've actually been shopping for a lot longer than that, but we had to start somewhere. Um, so it's the ancient Egyptians who became master traders and the exchange of goods and services long before currency was a thing. So at these open-air markets along the ports, you could buy anything from food to pottery to ox to slaves. This was long before the word strategy became a thing. Um, and for centuries, this is how we shopped, and you'd be surprised how truly innovative it was. Um, in the year 3000 BC is when we have the first receipt, which actually is a tablet. Um, and these were used for traders, mostly who were trading large amounts of goods. Um, and then around uh, 0 to 100 BC, we got the first branded food product, which you can still buy today. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce this Chiawan Prosh. It's an Indian cooking paste. And then once paper currency became more widely accepted, our global economy exploded. So moving into the first century AD, we saw a lot of inventions that would actually change the retail landscape, but much later. Um, so it's in this first century that we get the first vending machine created by Hero of Alexandria. And this was created to dispense holy water because people were taking too much before religious ceremonies. And then the same inventor is who we have to thank for, for automatic doors, which these are like real diagrams from that time. Um, so obviously automatic doors didn't really become much of a thing until we got electricity, but he invented all of this in the same time period, which is insane. So moving into the second century, we saw the rise of the first shopping center in Rome, um, which is still there today. It's surprisingly exactly like you see shopping centers now. There's retail, restaurants, offices, each retailer specialized in a specific product, so there was literally no competition, and the living was really easy. And this is where we remained for hundreds of years. But it's the invention of the cash register and the dawn of the department store that turned us into consumers. So here we have Harry Gordon Selfridge, um, and he is to thank for the beginning of true retail innovation. One of his quotes, excite the mind and the hand will reach for the pocket, which I think sounds like a scary movie. Um, but in the early 1900s, Selfridge put into place retail strategies that now we don't even think of as strategy. Um, while working at Marshall Field, which is now Macy's, he was the first to use this kind of shopping um, slogan, you have so many days shopping um, before Christmas. And he's, we also have him to thank for the customer is always right term, which in retail is not debatable. He went on to open his own department store, one in Chicago and one in London, uh, promoting the notion that shopping was supposed to be pleasurable and not a dull everyday chore. So the store was tires tirelessly advertised and meticulously merchandised. There were restaurants, a library, reception rooms for all types of foreign visitors, a hair salon, places to rest. It was basically done to hold shoppers hostage, and it worked. So in the 1920s, credit cards came along, and we also got our first supermarket grocery store, King Cullen, and then Kroger came along, and they were the first to establish their own in-house bakery, which had the nation shook. In 1937, we saw the invention of the shopping cart. Ten years later, the first 7-Eleven convenience store, and then the birth of the shopping mall culture in the 60s. And if you have never Googled shopping malls in the 60s, you're missing out. It's like a mid-century modern heaven. So another major, major retail concept in the 60s was big box stores, and they're essentially um, expansive supermarket stores that receive volume discounts. You all know them, Walmart, Target. Um, they're able to pass that discount through to consumers, and it created massive disruption and continues to do so today um, because it creates so much competition for those smaller mom-and-pop stores, and they usually can't survive. 
Um, and a major innovation during that time was the barcode. And at first, it was a little bullseye, a colorful bullseye. And a funny story, the, the man who created this, uh, his wife, as she got older, when she was shopping in stores, pretty much every time she checked out, she would tell the clerk that her husband invented the barcode. Like, she did that every day, forever. So consumerism continued to grow, and everything changed in 1994 when online shopping was born. And can you guess what the first online transaction was? And I'm not talking about a secure, encrypted transaction that we have now, but just transaction money for a good. Any guesses? <laughs> Molly will know this one. It was pizza. And it was actually from Pizza Hut. Um, and this is a real article from the New York Times on that same week. Online pizza ideas clever, but only half baked. I love that. Um, the first uh, encrypted secure transaction was for a Sting CD. That's not a joke. So, Sting CD. Sting, like his first CD. Yeah. Um, so with this, we saw the explosion of Amazon, which used to just sell books, and online shipping obviously became a thing. So retailers could suddenly reach an entirely new population to sell their goods. Um, and in 2007, Facebook Pages launched, and this was revolutionary. It introduced social media as a real tool for advertising. And social media is arguably the most important tool retailers have to reach their consumers. Um, in the same time period came an explosion of technology. We got mobile cash wrap, self-checkout, proximity marketing, and the ever-evolving omni-channel term was born, which is basically retailers that use every platform available to them to reach their customer. So where are we today? Um, we're not doing so great. This year will mark what will become the largest wave of retail store closings we've ever seen. So right now there's 3,500 planned store closures, but um, we're looking at at least 8,000 this year, um, and there could be more. So since that first pizza was purchased online, uh, we haven't been doing great, but um, while traditional retail landscape continues to shrink, the survivors and the disruptors continue to innovate. So I wanted to just take a look at what people are doing now to survive. So the first one are these showrooms and guide shops. These are stores that don't actually sell any inventory. Um, you go in or you make an appointment, you try everything on, and then you order it and it's delivered to your home or office. So for a society like us, we're so obsessed with instant gratification, it's kind of a surprise that this has done so well, but um, they think that it's doing so well because the level of VIP service that the employees are able to offer to the consumers because they don't have to mess with inventory, stocking shelves, they can really focus on the customer. Another um, innovation are eliminating cues altogether. So new technology like Adobe Smart Shopping Bags that have QR code technology and RFID allows shoppers to scan and pay for their items without ever going through a line. Um, it's a major game changer, obviously, for the holidays. And this, is, this exact bag is being tested in REI um, in stores in China. But then, obviously, Amazon Go, if you heard about their recent grocery store, they have their very own technology. Um, and if we got into that, we would literally be here all night. But it's really cool if you get online and read about it. A third innovation is geomagnetic indoor positioning, which um, I feel like Ryan and Matt will get really geeky about this, but this is technology that uses a smartphone's built-in sensors to detect anomalies in Earth's magnetic fields. Um, and that helps you pinpoint location indoors. It's like really scientific. Uh, but Indoor Atlas, which is the leader in the field, they provide a cloud platform um, to build location-based services without the need to purchase, install, or upkeep um, what we think of as like the beacon technology. So um, beacon technology, there's usually a large amount of costly infrastructure and a lot of training that has to happen. So this is basically just a more seamless integration, um, and it provides more problem-solving techniques for companies to use. So the last innovation I wanted to talk about was BOPIS, which is um, basically the explosion of e-commerce has brought about problems for USPS, for Amazon. They literally cannot keep up with the amount of packages that need to go out every day, especially around the holidays. We're getting to a point where it actually cannot happen. It's impossible to deliver that many packages. So BOPIS is buy online, pick up in store. Um, it's nothing new, but it is a retail tactic retailers are looking to innovate on. Uh, because it just offers some solutions to the consumer. You don't have to pay for shipping. And now retailers are offering discounts if you shop this way because you're still coming into the store. So they can still catch you um, and hopefully you'll buy some other things. 
And then package pickup in general is changing. Um, now we have a lot of parcel pickup centers, like in New Delhi, if you go to any uh, metro station there on your commute, you can pick up your package there. And then this is becoming popular in the US as well. Amazon is opening up brick and mortar pickup only stores. And the first one is in DC and it's opening this year. So I don't think the ancient Egyptians ever imagined a day where they could get in a self-driving vehicle, arrive at a temperature controlled store, shop with an electronic device in hand, sending them reviews, and customized discounts for the products that they're looking at, um, and then check out without ever having to provide currency or trade. Or did they? Because I think maybe they did. But with the continuing rise of e-commerce and the changing economy that we're living in, it's up to companies like ours to really help our, um, our retailers and our clients figure out their physical place in the world. And although it might not look like this anymore, which sure is beautiful, um, I guarantee you it will be made of bricks and mortars and not just numbers and letters on a screen. Thank you. <laughs>